Yeah, thank you very much. Good afternoon. Hi, Brad. afternoon, Dan. First of all, uh, head of your trip to Stamford Bridge, how are the squad looking? Yeah, well, we obviously preparing well for the game and, uh, yeah, we're looking forward to it. Um, the squad at this moment in time is 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 looking forward to the game and, uh, yeah, we've uh, obviously another day to go before we finalise our, our plan. Uh, and what are you expecting from Chelsea? A few new signings from last season. Mm. Do you expect a different challenge? No, it's always a tough game. You know, you're playing against a top team. Uh, they showed in their last... Uh, home game at uh, against Tottenham, they're, they're a very good side, technically good players, and um, and have that ambition and uh, motivation to to want to win. So um, and they'll look to bounce back from their their last game against Leeds. So uh, so yeah, well, we anticipate a tough game, uh, but uh, but we're looking forward to it. And still looking for that first win in the league. Mm. How important could that? first three points be and have you done anything different in training this week well it's a matter of time I think that what we've what we've shown in the um, in the in certainly two of the three league games Brentford and um, and the Southampton game that we mustn't stop I think that was the message played very well for certain you know certain periods of the game but you can't stop in the Premier League you've got to keep uh, working you've got to keep concentrated and um, yeah it's reinforcing a lot of work of when we're good um, but also increasing the intensity of our game, which is important. I have to ask you about Wesley Fofana, Brendan. Mm -hmm. First of all, has he trained this week and is he available for selection this weekend? Yeah, he won't be available for, for the weekend. He um, he has trained with the uh, with our under-23 uh, squad. Um, so, uh, so, yeah. Uh, and I know you spoke about it after Stockport, but are you expecting Chelsea to come in with another bid for him? I'm not sure. It's... Uh, it's something about my concentration really with the with the players that we have and the team. So I I can't lose energy thinking so much about it. If I'm honest, it'll it'll be something that will be done between the clubs. Um, until that happens, then we have to uh, continue to work with what we have. And just three years ago, the Harry Maguire situation when he left to Manchester United, are there any similarities to that situation? Because it was something that kind of dragged on throughout the summer. No, no, it was totally different. Um, I think there was. I was aware over the course of the the summer that the, there was a possibility that could happen, and I think, uh, in fairness to Harry, I've always said this before, and I'll repeat: Harry was, in terms of his behaviour and his uh, his focus for the club was, but was fantastic. And uh, right until the last minute, he was with the team and with the squad, and then he uh, then he moved on. So. Um, so no, the uh, it it is different. Obviously, in in a few of my seasons here, we've lost obviously Ben Chilwell as well. Um, but this unfortunately is just a little bit different. But uh, but our focus is with the team and uh, the players that are available. And just a week to go until the transfer window closing. Are you expecting a few outgoings and hopefully a few incomings? Hopefully that can be the case. Yeah, may yeah, be you know be really good for the the team and uh, to be able to do that. Uh, to improve the squad is is always important, you know. I think that uh, that is key for us. But everyone knows the situation, and uh, until that changes, we will work with what we have. Thank you very much. Pleasure. Hi, Brendan. Hope you're okay. Um, with Wes, does he understand the action that you're taking? Is he being civil about what's going on? Yeah. Yeah, he's fine. What's it like walking here in a morning, or walking into the building in a morning? Obviously, the situation at the moment with the results off the pitch not so great. Um, you know, the transfer situation I think we all know about. You know, I guess most people could be forgiven for maybe feeling a bit down about the situation. But what's the mood like in the camp on a daily basis? Yeah, it's absolutely fine. We're very lucky to work in the profession that we do. Jason, there's, uh, there are more important things in life. And, um, and like I said, you... Uh, you know, football is obviously important for many people's lives, and we do as, uh, as well as we possibly can do to to make those lives as happy as we can. But um, but when you're not winning games, it's all about process. You you got to get back, get into work. I'm one of the last people that will lose my optimism. You know, I'm I'm very optimistic in, in life and and uh, and with this this team and, and with the club so um, so we come in every day we're very fortunate to work in a, in a great facility and I know there's a lot of 
noise and speculation around uh, what we haven't done in, in terms of transfers and improving the squad. And But ultimately, we, we come in here every day to, to improve and develop and, um, and that hasn't changed. Of the matches you played in the Premier League so far, you're getting plenty of the ball, although maybe not against Arsenal, I grant you. But um, I guess not creating that many real chances. Um, I think you've only managed eight shots on target in three matches so far. Actually, you are scoring goals, I grant you as well. But what do you put, the, what do you put the lack of opportunities or the lack of real chances down to? Is it simply mm. you know, lack of creativity between you know, certain players? Well, it, it's always about the team. I think the uh, it's it's about the collective. We, like you say, Arsenal, we, we scored two and maybe didn't create so much, but uh, but I still think we've we've done enough to win the games. I think that uh, that connection and and those relationships improve as the season goes on. Um, I think we've been in position, certainly in two of the three games, to to have won the games, which we should have done, uh, and I think. Um, but it's definitely something that we, you know, we recognise that in the final third of the pitch we need to speed up our game. You know, it needs to, you know, have that bit more flexibility, a bit more, not be so safe, you know, and take that risk. And uh, so that's that's something that we've spoken about and uh, we've worked on. Is that something you just have to communicate to the players about, or is it something that you know comes from inside, maybe a bit of self belief? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a bit of everything. I think at this level, and if you want to compete at the very top level, but certainly throughout the Premier League, you need to have big belief. That's very, very important. Um, there's things that happens within the game, you know, that uh, you know you can work on the training field, but there's certain moments of intuition in the game and 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 a will to to score a goal and a desire to score a goal. That that's absolutely vital. Um, so, so yeah, so there's many factors to it. Um, clearly, confidence is, is one as well. But I think, like I said, if you look at the Brentford game, we were excellent for for 60 minutes. If you look at the game against Southampton, how we played in that for up to 60 minutes, the tempo of the game, the speed in the game, the numbers in the box. Um, and like I said earlier, we, we mustn't stop that. And I think that's been the, the difference. Uh, but we've stopped when maybe... There was felt there's a comfort in the game, but at this level, there's, you're never comfortable. Like we've seen at one nil and, and two nil, so uh, so we just have to keep promoting our work because if you're, you're going to achieve anything and and get back to any sort of level, the the basics of that is hard work, and and that's something we reinforced this week. As you know, management isn't just about what you do before a game; it's what you do during a game as well. Do you regret maybe some of the changes that you've made? In, in those home games where you have been in front and they've turned either into draws or defeats and the other managers have you know, maybe changed the games in a more positive manner and obviously gone on to, to gain points or win? In different circumstances, isn't it? If you're 2-0 down in a game, it's, the game becomes random then so you can make as many changes you know, or you can make five changes uh, and if it works for you, great. If it doesn't, um, you, uh, you, you know, if we don't get the results, it's my responsibility. You know, so whether you make a positive change or you don't get the result, it's uh, the responsibility is the manager. But uh, but you always do what you do at the at the moment, and you you have that feel in the game. And um, like I said, sometimes it works for you, sometimes it doesn't. I don't necessarily reflect back so much on it. I. I, I look at the game and analyse the games where it can be better and uh, yeah, and look to be better in our next game. Last couple from me. Uh, what's the latest with the set-piece coach? Are they coming in soon? Yeah, there's nothing uh, nothing to add at that moment. Thank you very much. Good luck. Hi, Brendan. Um, Hi, on. on the injury situation, are there any fresh injuries ahead of the trip to Chelsea this weekend? Uh, we're getting a show around James Madison, but we'll we'll see how that is um, tomorrow. So hopefully he'll be okay. But uh, but that that would be the only only doubt at the moment. Is that that hip problem that he's had no, before or something different? No, just uh, felt a, a twinge yesterday and uh, when he was training. So um, so yeah, we'll, we'll have to see what that looks like tomorrow.
Okay. And uh, I wondered about Ryan Bertrand. I know we've not seen him for, for a long time, but is there a time scale you have on, on him at all about when he might be fit again to be in, in line for selection? No, there's no timeline at the moment. He's, uh, he's awaiting an operation. So, um, so, yeah, so no time on that at the moment. Okay. Um, on <clears throat> Wesley Fofana, I wonder for you as a manager when you would consider bringing him back in your thoughts for selection. When when is the right time to do that? If if this move to Chelsea doesn't doesn't happen. Well, I think that for me it's always about the 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 commitment and when the players are ready to commit to the to the team and, and the ethos of the team. I think, like I said, he, it's been a challenge for for Wesley. So, uh, and if you're not in the right frame of mind and you have to respect the the welfare of the player, then um, then that's uh, we, we have to push on. But um, but listen, the window will shut uh, in the not too distant future, and then uh, obviously a lot of things become much clearer after that finishes. Um, what was the conversation like? when you were talking to him about him not being in, involved in selection processes and him then being yeah. training with the development squad? It was, it was okay. Oh, and it's a private conversation, so I'm never going to go into too much here, to be honest. Okay. Um, I, I, obviously, you told us that there'd been a third bid on, on Tuesday morning, and um, you said that they had, when we spoke after the Stockport game, that mm. you didn't really know too much detail ab about that. How, how close was that to the valuation that, that Leicester have in mind for Wesley Fafana? I've got nothing to add on that. 